So the purpose of this video is to look at comparative statics um, and just to give some simple applications to the UK housing market. Comparative statics are looking at the interaction of demand and supply. It's the basic tool of microeconomics. I was watching a TV show recently, one of the ones that my wife tends to force me to watch, and this guy, Phil Spencer, was trying to explain why house prices in the UK are so high. And he said something along the lines of Britain is a small island with a growing population. And what I want to do in this video is just to give you some of the uh, tools that you need to be able to interpret this economically. So we can look at the basic demand and supply diagram. Um, on the y-axis we have price, on the x-axis we have quantity over a specified time period. We've got a demand curve which is downward sloping. The typical textbook explanation for this is because if the price of a good falls then people wish to consume buy uh, <clears throat> more of it. The other way to think about this is that as we consume more of a good, the value that we place on additional units falls, i.e. diminishing marginal utility is the reason why demand curves slope downwards. We can add a upward sloping supply curve. Again, intuitively, this should be reasonably obvious. If the price of a good goes up, then firms will be willing to supply more. But again, there's an underlying economic reason for this, which relies on the notion of opportunity costs. Um, as you produce more of a good, the opportunity costs of production will rise um, and therefore supply curves slope upwards. Um, the interaction of demand and supply is going to generate an equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. And this is our basic starting point. We can think about some determinants of supply and demand. Um, the demand curve is just only showing us quantity demanded um, as it relates to price. Uh, the supply curve is showing as quantity supplied as it relates to price. Anything other than price changes um, are going to show up with a shock to those curves. We can have a look at a very simple table here that's just giving us some examples of the type of shocks that are going to affect supply and demand. And I think it's reasonably obvious um, whether a shock is primarily going to affect supply or demand. So let's give an, a, an example. Let's consider an increase in the divorce rate and how this should affect UK housing. We'll start off with our basic demand and supply diagram. Let's bring up our list of uh, causes of shock. Uh, an increase in the divorce rate is going to increase the number of consumers. This is a demand shock. Step one of comparative statics is to identify whether it's a supply shock or a demand shock. Step two is to decide whether it's going to cause an increase or a decrease. An increase in the divorce rate is going to increase the number of consumers. Um, therefore, demand curve is going to shift upwards or outwards um, and interact with the supply curve at a higher price and also at a higher quantity. This should fit with intuition that if the demand for a good rises, prices are going to rise and so too will output. We can think of another effect. Let's consider a shortage of bricks. Here's our demand supply diagram. A uh, shortage of bricks is going to raise the price of an input. Um, so step one is to identify that it's going to primarily affect the supply curve. Step two um, is to realize that this is going to make suppliers less willing to supply. So it's going to be a negative supply shock and cause the supply curve to shift inwards. Um, it looks a bit like this is going up, depending on how this is drawn. The key thing is to realize um, that it's moving towards zero um, on the x-axis. Um, at the new supply curve, we've got a price and quantity, um, and the price goes up and quantity falls. Again, this should fit with intuition. Um, if there's a shortage of bricks in the UK housing market, we're going to see less houses on the market um, and we're going to see the price of houses go up. Uh, let's make things more complicated. Let's consider an increase in the divorce rate and a shortage of bricks. We can just replicate what we've done previously. If the number of consumers goes up, this is going to be a positive demand shock. If the price of inputs goes up, then this is going to be a negative supply shock. It's starting to look a little bit complicated. Um, but that doesn't mean that comparative statics loses its usefulness. 
OK, we can say that the effect on quantity is ambiguous. These two effects are pushing in different directions. But the way that we've done this is that the price effect is going to be unambiguously positive. Um, prices are going to go up based on these two effects. Now, obviously, in the real world, we're going to have an infinite number of demand and sh supply shocks occurring simultaneously. But analytically, uh, it's useful to be able to simplify, to consider major shocks, to consider the primary impact of major shocks. And in many cases, we should deliver a meaningful prediction about what will happen um, either to prices or to quantity. Let's now go back to Phil Spencer. Britain is a small island with a growing population. And let's analyze that using comparative statics. So here's our supply demand diagram. The first thing to point out when he mentions that Britain is a small island, he's making a comment about the supply capacity. And what he's saying here is that we introduce a concept known as elasticity and talk about the responsiveness of supply to changes in price. And because Britain is a small island, because the, it's supply constrained, we think the supply curve is going to be relatively steep. In other words, you need to have a very large change in price to elicit a change in quantity, precisely because it's difficult to build new houses. So based on this updated uh, supply curve, we can then talk about the impact of a growing population. And a growing population, for the same reason as an increase in the divorce rate, is going to constitute a positive demand shock. So we can shift demand upwards and we see the impact of this, which is a relatively small increase in output and a relatively large increase in prices. Um, we've left the original supply curve on the diagram so that you can compare and realize that it's because of that inelasticity of supply that the demand shock is uh, primarily affecting prices and bidding up the price of existing housing stock rather than causing an increase in houses being built. Um, we can extend this a little bit further and say, let's consider a country where um, supply is not so constrained, for example, uh, a large island with a small population um, is somewhere like Australia. Let's imagine that Australia has a far more elastic supply curve. It's far flatter. Um, in that case, um, hopefully the diagram isn't getting too confusing yet, but if we introduce the Australian supply curve and model a similar demand shock, we can see that, again, prices are going to go up and output is going to go up, uh, but output is going up by a far greater relative uh, extent than prices.